In my WRC9 review, I play the PC and Xbox One versions to tell you what's what, show you how they look, and talk about what's new. Despite being a great rally game, WRC8 was overlooked by those who either have some weird undying loyalty to Dirt Rally 2.0, because apparently difficulty means realism, or they want to hijack the Epic Games Store even though developers lose only 12% compared to Steam's 30. Yes, I know games can be more expensive, including WRC8, but that's also the case on the Microsoft Store, Steam, and Origin. It's why things like instant gaming exist. Anyway, a glance at YouTube comments shows WRC9 is being treated the same way. Adding fuel to the fire is the fact it's an annual update, and that WRC8 was a big update over WRC7. It had two years of development after all. Oh, and WRC9 isn't even accurate, because Corona killed motorsport for the first half of 2020, so being the official game is less, well, official. An uphill struggle then, but rally fans who instantly dismiss WRC9 are missing out, although by no means is it the perfect rally game, as my honest and potentially too lengthy review explains. So how does WRC9 stack up against WRC8? Feel free to subscribe and like for more racing game and motoring content. Not a huge amount, but it's quality over quantity. There are three new rally stages and each one is original. Rally Safari Kenya's more open nature and wildlife paves the way for some seriously beautiful scenery and high-speed rally action. Rally New Zealand, meanwhile, is the one where you're most likely to throw your car over the edge like a lemming. Gravel, narrow roads, farmland fences, and predominantly gentler curves make for fast and unforgiving driving conditions. Last up is Rally Japan, which takes place in Nagoya, and is a race that's been absent from WRC for nine years. It's reminiscent of Monte Carlo's tarmac sections, as the elevation changes can be rapid, and some roads are so thin you'll think twice about a Scandinavian flick. Rally Finland and Rally Portugal, meanwhile, are being recreated. The updated versions, coming in a free DLC, more on that later, will add to the existing rallies, as opposed to replacing them. Also new is Clubs Mode, which lets you create one custom club for championships, either online or offline, and public or private, and join up to three others, made by other players. Plus there's a co-driver mode, also available later for free, which involves one player at the wheel and another providing pace notes, both of which are scored. You may also want to tuck into the daily, weekly and monthly challenges, each with an online leaderboard to show how high, or low in my case, you rank in the world or indulge in some online or split-screen multiplayer. Overall, expect 35 new stages, 52 official teams and their drivers, 15 legendary historic cars, four of which are new, slightly improved visuals, PS5 and Xbox Series X and S support, and tweaks to the handling, which I will also talk about later. Obviously, it's a review. WRC9 is really not a huge departure, visually speaking, but I will say that on PC at 4K and 2.5K with the settings cranked up, it looks great. In fact, during heavy rain, the game looks as close to lifelike as I've seen from any rally game. Some moments, such as during a rainy sunset in Kenya, will make you want to stop to admire the view. The way sunlight beams through the trees with a golden hue is really quite something. Some surfaces are overly shiny, but it's not distracting. The main thing is that shadows, lights, weather, and all other effects appear realistic, which is what you want from a simulator. It's less stylized than a Dirt Rally 2.0 and superior in terms of lighting. A low sun really does blind you enough to affect your pace, while your headlights clear a path in the night but reflect back harshly on some surfaces. 60 frames per second 4K is possible. My still pretty fast Nvidia GTX 1080 Ti did a decent job, although you will want something more powerful to avoid stutter or drop some settings from very high to high, or perhaps medium, if you really crave high frame rates. 2.5K was smoother and 1080p was capable of way beyond 60 frames per second. For those who experience choppiness on 120 or 144Hz monitors in WRC8, I've not been able to replicate this, but from what I've read you can lock frame rates to counter the problem, and hopefully that's the same case in WRC9. While the cars look detailed, some background objects could be better. A few tree types look fake and the crowd is still not the best, but these issues are soon forgotten once moving. Personally, I prefer blur and dynamic field of view off, but they can enhance the feeling of speed. Not that you need to, as WRC9 shifts along nicely. 
What about on console? Well, my trusty Xbox One Day One Edition that refuses to die, but that's another story, is limited to 30 frames per second, as is the PS4, and so is the Xbox One X and PS4 Pro. That means less smooth visuals. Dirt Rally 2.0 wins here as it can manage 60 frames on console, but I find 30 FPS is still enjoyable. That's the bad news. The good news is that next-gen consoles are supported, and so are a lot of steering wheels, including the Logitech G923 I recently reviewed, although true force force feedback is yet to be added. Next-gen consoles, meanwhile, can expect 60 frames per second minimum and native 4K, hooray, as well as optimised SSD performance for faster loading times. In the case of the new PS5 controller, haptic feedback is also being implemented for helping you feel what the car is doing. Now you may have noticed the standard Xbox One visuals are murkier and less detailed, and that's because they are murkier and less detailed. Side by side with a decent PC, PC Master Race, it's blatantly obvious. It would be nice if you could raise the brightness, but at least the frame rate was stable during testing. In some ways, the console version's lower fidelity actually results in a harder challenge. Bright sunlight and heavy rain obscure your view more on Xbox, adding to the realism, while your headlights seem to light a smaller distance. If you've ever driven in a storm, you will know that no matter the speed of your wipers, they seem to prove ineffective. It's scary, realistic, and even more so when racing in a high-performance rally car. So the console version has an unexpected merit or hindrance, depending on how you look at it. Like in WRC8, you can expect the most comprehensive career mode of any rally game. Sadly, there's no option to upgrade your car, and the user interface is the same as before. But these are minor issues when you consider the depth of the tuning menu. You really can fine-tune your rally car how you like it, or if even more advanced, for each particular stage. Gear ratios, for instance, can be made shorter for when you know you'll never get near your top speed, and could benefit from greater acceleration. Most calendar days give you the option to do different types of race. Historic Audi Quattro A2 one minute, and then a full-blown rally training, or a day off for your crew the next. FYI, you can race at Junior WRC, WRC3, WRC2, or the top flight WRC level. Basically, WRC9's career mode is identical to WRC8, and that's no bad thing. I still enjoy making progress up to WRC level, earning money and experience points to sink into the same research and development tree as I go. Some skills are useful, such as reducing the pain of the puddles of death, more on that later, while others enhance your experience and money gained from a race or improve the car's performance. Speaking of the crew, you can recruit engineers, scouts, etc. to reduce repair times, improve your winnings, and a whole lot more. It's a layer of depth that helps bolster the career mode nicely, but it does also make me pine for even more. Perhaps in WRC 20, 21, or 22. Yes, remember that Codemasters has the official WRC license from 2023 after an 18-year hiatus. There are some odd omissions, such as the lack of tyre pressure, but then you do get mid-rally repairs and can only spend so much time doing them, like in real life. This forces you to go maximum attack only when necessary, especially on the realistic damage setting. You can even turn off the ability to reset your vehicle if you crash, something for the most hardcore of hardcore sim racers. WRC9's AI is a mixed bag. One minute it can be as impressive as Sebastian Loeb and you'll feel inadequate. No jokes. Other times, it's like Maureen from driving school after a 24-hour bender. Yet your computer-controlled opponents will never, ever post a did-not-finish DNF, which is unrealistic in a motorsport as unforgiving as this one. What I like most about the career mode, besides mastering how to drive, is that it introduces you to some of the best stages. Yeah, you can rinse quick play and try it all, but I would highly recommend prioritising this mode in WRC9, if only because it eases you in with slower, less powerful cars. You can choose to skip Junior if that's too slow for experienced players. However, it's actually a challenge in itself to master this pace of rally, and seeing where you stack up in the online leaderboards is addictive. Admittedly, F120 2020's career mode is more in depth, but for a rally game, WRC9 is king, especially as you can now adjust the difficulty mid career. Yes, no more being stuck and either carrying a lot of regret or having to restart. Now the bits you've been waiting for. How does WRC9 handle with a steering wheel and controller? Like a smooth flowing piece of rally brilliance, that's how. It has been improved in subtle ways that make it more natural and realistic than ever. 
from a beginner's perspective, WRC9 is accessible enough to learn, particularly if you leave ABS and automatic gears on. Yet mastery will take balls to the wall bravery, skill and delicate inputs. Compared with Dirt Rally 2.0, which can be needlessly and unrealistically difficult, WRC9 recreates that zen driving state where you connect with the car and glide between corners in a way that would make Colin McRae proud. Considering there are no g-forces or actual real world physics to guide you, only highlights the effort made to make WRC9 as intuitive as possible. And I say that as someone who has been in and driven actual rally cars. You can actually see the similarity with real onboard driving footage if you want some proof. Going back to WRC8 using the same Citroen C3 WRC car, it feels heavier and harder to get into a groove. The jumps are bigger too. WRC9, the top flight WRC cars seem more keen to get into oversteer and more eager to steer after a slide. Yet each different WRC car offers varying levels of front and rear end eagerness. Surfaces are handled well too, tarmac was awful in Dirt Rally 2.0. In WRC9, it feels grippy and predictable. It helps that the force feedback implementation is great, with my Logitech and Thrustmaster steering wheels a joy to use, until I push my luck and end up in a ditch. Fnatic is the official sponsor, so no doubt my CSL Elite would be great too. It's just I only have a McLaren GT3 steering wheel to test, and that's not ideal. For a steering wheel, I'd reduce the force feedback and level of torque to a moderate to light level. You should feel like you and the car are working together. Too much resistance means you lose energy fast and driving becomes a battle. These cars are designed to be driven at the limit, so maximize that agility. Another WRC9 positive is that you get FOV or field of view settings, even on console. Field of view allows you to govern the camera height depth, and even how much of your surroundings you see. This is great as it allows you to compensate for your screen size, the distance away from said screen, and also personal preferences. You may want to do some research into field of view settings and see if you can find a calculator for optimum goodness, or just experiment a bit. Damage also features in WRC9, unlike for those who played WRC8 on the Nintendo Switch, and it shows your mangled car in wonderful detail. Tires can burst, the bonnet crumples and moves in the wind, doors fail to close, and more. Said damage affects handling too. Obviously the most realistic experience is had with a steering wheel, but WRC9 is bags of fun without. In fact, I was significantly faster in some stages owing to how fast you can mash the inputs. With that said, I would suggest turning down the sensitivity to minus 10 for left and right, it gets a bit weird if you only do one, and then increase the dead zone to 10 or 15. These changes smooth out your input and reduce annoying snaky moments, which happen most when using the third person camera views. Car movement can look odd in these instances, so I tend to avoid them anyway. This is another area where people seem to get mad at WRC8, although many cars are actually, for the most part, accurate. WRC9 is said to be improved, and I've not had many audio complaints. Engine revs, transmission whines, stones hitting the bottom of the car, it's all as you'd expect. Meanwhile, the co-driver pace notes, available in English, French, German, Spanish and Italian, also seem less confusing and more able to help guide you through a stage, not just in one piece, but also faster. You can change the pace notes timing too, from far ahead to ahead, default, late and very late, which may help some of you. And now we come to the not so good. For starters, the aforementioned puddles of death seem to be a problem on Xbox, but not on PC. Like in WRC8, they can send you in a new and unexpected direction rapidly. I tested this in Wales, Kenya, and other rallies with rain. On PC, you seem to glide through unaffected except for the noise, suggesting it's something to do with the console's physics rendering. You can sink some research points into the water puddle skill in career mode, but I don't think that transfers to quick play. I also noticed suspension compresses before touching the ground, which is weird in replays. And that, as you may have noticed, the rotation of the steering wheel in the game does not line up with your actual movements, unless you use some really small rotation thing. There's also no virtual reality, which is a shame because WRC9 would benefit from it. The club's mode meanwhile is basic but functional with a leaderboard and the ability to have as many members as you want, but I wanted to make the A Tribe Called Cars Club and was unable to because there's currently no name adjustment. We also have to wait for the co-driver mode. 
This could provide good co-op fun and adds to the realism, or major arguments if the directions are terrible. There are also some weird audio bugs. In the old Lancia, for instance, the engine noise shifts towards the back and becomes more bassy the moment you lift off the accelerator, and then jumps forward the moment you accelerate again. Into right four, small cut, and left four. And I feel like some of the career mode objectives are a bit annoying and, at least once, impossible to complete. Not using the best tyres for a few races is not exactly simulator-esque. Despite the lack of Group B cars, WRC9 is decent value as all players will get three free DLC updates. The M1 patch in early October adds the new version of Rally Portugal, complete with six stages, a photo mode for snapping photos, and one extra WRC driver. M2, arriving in early November, provides a new Rally Finland stage with six new stages, the co-driver mode, if all goes to plan, and one brand new official concept car. Last up at the end of December, M3 brings with it the eSports 2021 patch, which starts in January 2021. Beyond that, your guess is as good as mine. Well, unless you work at Kiloton. Unlike Dirt Rally 2.0, you get more content out of the box, and there's less of a focus on buying DLC, which I can commend. It makes the annual update thing more palatable. I'd also like to add that, like Dirt 5, an upgrade to the PS5 and Xbox Series X version will be free. So there's no need to worry about buying two versions of the same game. While WRC 8 was a great rally game, WRC 9 makes rallying even more realistic and refined. Ignore the haters who've not tried it yet, this is a compelling simulator that makes the motorsport exhilarating and keeps you coming back. Things I never truly felt with Dirt Rally 2.0. Though not a radical departure as you would expect from significantly less development time, the changes to the handling and visuals make it noticeably better on PC and, to a lesser extent, console. Time was spent where it matters most, and it shows. WRC9 also has great steering wheel force feedback, plays well on a controller, and the stage design is best in class. If only it had Group B Rally cars, VR support, and the AI was a little more consistent. But then future updates could change all that. Meanwhile, revisions to the user interface and presentation would have reduced the feeling of familiarity. But you soon forget when racing. Besides, if you dislike annual updates, you could buy WRC games every other year, as I do with the Codemasters F1 games. Yes, WRC 8 offers a generous slice of rally gaming for less money, but when you play the games back to back, you see what makes WRC 9 special. It treads an impressive balance between realism, enjoyment, and depth unlike anything else. Let's also not forget the WRC 9's next-gen console support, and all the aforementioned extras, including clubs and the eSports Championship. If any of that stuff interests you, then it's worth buying. However, if you played previous WRC games, maybe the presentation and stage familiarity will put you off. In summary, to ignore this rally title because of the whole Epic Store thing would be a shame. Suffice to say, Codemasters will really have its work cut out when it takes over the series. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye. Left four tightens, deceptive, fifty. Intellect fight.